You've all seen them. MRI machines. Massive circular things. Maybe you've even had a scan. The person sits right in the middle, gets shoved in. The person evidently has something wrong with them. The thing that they're sitting in the middle of is a superconducting magnet. And because it's a superconductor, you know that it has to be kept cool because it has to be below the critical temperature. So we actually cool it with liquid helium and that is expensive stuff. So you should know from magnetic fields that if this acts like a, basically a big coil, then we have a magnetic field that's going into the page here, as it were, it's going through the center. What the magnetic field does is affect the protons at the center of hydrogen atoms in the person's body. Now, even without a magnetic field, these protons are spinning and they're all spinning in all different directions. Now the magnetic field is coming out of the page towards us, like we said. But let's say that this proton is spinning around like that. It's spinning at a bit of an angle. So the area that I've drawn there is showing the axis of its rotation. What happens is that it acts like a mini gyroscope. When you have a gyroscope that's spinning and it's subjected to some sort of force that isn't in the same direction as its axis of rotation, what happens is that it starts to precess. In other words, this proton will start to wiggle, as it were. This axis of rotation is going to spin round like that, much like this gyroscope here. So because the direction of the magnetic field is the same for all of these protons, that means that all of these protons are going to precess in the same direction. The speed at which they precess has an angular frequency, and that is proportional to the magnetic field strength, or rather we should say flux density. That makes sense. If there's no magnetic flux density, then they won't precess. The bigger the magnetic field, the faster they'll precess. So once you've got all these protons in your body precessing, they're able to absorb certain frequency photons. And they're in the range of radio frequency. So we say RF photons, and these have the same frequency as the precession of the protons. What happens when they do this? Proton spin alignment flips. So let's say that this proton's axis of rotation was in this direction towards the camera out of the page as it were. When it absorbs a photon, it flips. And so now the axis of rotation is going in the other direction. In other words, it spins the other way. To make it even better, what we can do is use a varying magnetic flux density across the body. And we do that by using other electromagnets that are around it. Or we can call that a gradient of the field. So we might have a high B over here that goes to a low magnetic flux density over here. So that means that different frequencies of photons are absorbed. So finally, once these are all spinning in opposite directions, what happens? Well, we stop the photons going in and then the protons de-excite. That means they flip back to where they were originally and they emit photons of the same frequency that they absorbed to begin with very similar to photons being absorbed by electrons. It's just that with electrons, we talk about straight energy levels. So when an electron is excited, it goes up an energy level, and then when it de-excites, it goes back down and releases a photon of the same energy if there are no energy levels in between. Similar idea here, it's excited, but we say it spins in the opposite direction. Its spin state is flipped, and so when it goes back, it emits a photon of the same frequency. So this is why it's called MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, because we're talking about protons that are spinning with a resonant frequency, as it were, and we fire photons of that frequency to be absorbed by them. Then using detectors that are all around, but the detectors can actually take a different form as well in different machines. These photons are picked up by them, and because they can detect what frequency the photons are, they can tell where those photons originated from because of this gradient is flux density that we set up across the person. Now, there's two massive advantages to MRI. Number one, it's not dangerous in any way, shape or form. Because it's only radio frequency photons coming in and out of your body, they're not going to ionize atoms in your body, unlike X-rays and gamma rays. That means that it's good for the brain. The second advantage is that you can build up very highly detailed 3D images of the inside of someone's body, and that includes soft tissue. It doesn't work well with bones though. Disadvantages, these scanners are really, really expensive. They cost millions. Another issue is that the person needs to lie very still in the scanner for a very long time, and it's very loud, and some people might get stressed. And finally, it can't be used for people with metal implants, and that includes pacemakers as well, because the magnet is so strong, it would just rip those pieces of metal right out of you. 
That's why it was used against robot John Connor in Terminator Genesis. I quite like that film. I don't know why I got so much hate. That's the basics of MRI. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please leave a like. If you think I missed anything out or you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll see you next time.